Cast Paradise reveals the mysteries of your favorite movies. Today, we're rewatching The Shawshank Redemption. Its dramatic tale and amazing performances have attracted many, but hidden gems and surprising details exist. Did you know that Tim Robbins had to endure genuine sewage smells for three days to shoot the classic scene where Andy Dufresne crawls across a river of sewage? How about the film's hauntingly beautiful soundtrack by Thomas Newman, which was originally overlooked for an Oscar consideration despite its enduring impact? This cinematic classic has more to it than meets the eye. From Andy's chess piece's secret meaning to the jail where the movie was filmed and its transition into a tourist attraction. We'll unveil Stephen King's connections, the almost casting options, and Morgan Freeman's touching narrative. We'll reveal the secrets and behind-the-scenes tales that made The Shawshank Redemption a classic. A-list actors in line to play Andy Although it's difficult to imagine anybody else portraying Andy Dufresne but Tim Robbins, several other A-list actors were given consideration. Nicolas Cage, Kevin Costner, Jeff Bridges, Tom Cruise, Johnny Depp, and Charlie Sheen were among the actors under consideration. Despite being offered the part, Tom Hanks declined it because of his obligations to Forrest Gump. Although Costner was already committed to 1995's Waterworld, he still loved the story and wanted to portray Andy. How did it end up? Tom Hanks won Best Actor over Morgan Freeman, who played Red in Shawshank, and Forrest Gump won Best Picture at the 67th Academy Awards. Robbins was not a candidate. Rob Reiner wanted the rights. Badly. Frank Darabont wrote the screenplay for The Shawshank Redemption, and Rob Reiner wanted to film it so much that he paid Darabont $2.5 million for the rights. Darabont gave Reiner's offer considerable thought, but in the end he declined it to direct the picture himself, saying that this was his chance to do something great. If Darabont had given the movie to Reiner, it would have seemed completely different. According to reports, Reiner wanted Tom Cruise to portray Andy and Harrison Ford to play Red. What was in that pipe? Andy Dufresne is shown crawling down a sewer pipe in the well-known moment when he escapes from the Shawshank State Penitentiary. Andy crawled to freedom through 500 yards of shit-smelling foulness. I can't even imagine, as Red puts it. That affluent? It was a concoction of sawdust, water, and chocolate syrup. Visitors at the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio, the real site of the fictitious jail, say they can still smell chocolate from filming that scene even after all these years. Not all fun and games. Morgan Freeman claims that shooting this movie wasn't a very enjoyable experience. The 2001 Academy Award winner said that was a strange production to Entertainment Weekly. On the shoot, there were really tense times. Between the director and the actors, producers and performers, and all of them, this personality trait exists among certain tribes. Peculiar. Let's put that one out of our minds. Whatever those disagreements were, they undoubtedly had no detrimental effect on the finished film, since the Shawshank Redemption is recognized as one of the best films of all time and has received seven Academy Award nominations. Goodfellas' impact on Shawshank there are several parallels between the Shawshank Redemption and the classic mafia picture Goodfellas, chief among them being the voiceover narration that runs throughout both films and the passage of time. This was not a fluke. During production, director Frank Darabont watched the movie every Sunday, which served as inspiration. Martin Scorsese would be a good choice if you want to emulate another filmmaker's style. Stephen King approved. Stephen King's 1982 novella, Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, served as the inspiration for the Shawshank Redemption. If you haven't already, we'd strongly suggest you read it. King said that writing the novel was aided by all of his childhood recollections of seeing prison-themed movies. Shawshank was one of King's favorite films out of all the ones made based on his works, and there are many of them. His main criticism of the movie was that Andy had to crawl down an excessively rounded sewage pipe to escape. Rita Hayworth's name appears in the book because, as the film depicts, Andy had a picture of the actress in his cell. Where were the women? 
Surprisingly, for the entire two hours and 22 minutes of the film, only two women speak, and both have extremely small roles. The first lady to speak is an irate grocery store patron, telling Brooks Hatlin, James Whitmore, to double bag. The second is when Andy meets Claire Slemmer, a bank teller, before moving to Mexico. Andy's wife, Renee Blaine, appears early in the movie, but has no dialogue. A Customized Cell Tim Robbins was picky about what he let inside his cell. In actuality, Andy Dufresne himself chose every single image on his cell. The posters Andy used to cover the wall opening weren't personally chosen by Robbins. During Andy's incarceration, Rita Hayworth, Marilyn Monroe, and Raquel Welch are the ladies shown on the posters. Welch has expressed her admiration for the movie. The sole female character in both the book and the movie is Hayward. Andy hangs posters of Hayworth, Linda Ronstadt, Jane Mansfield, and Hazel Court in the narrative. Morgan Freeman's son had a bit part. When they arrived, the prisoners made fun of Andy Dufresne and the other new arrivals at Shawshank. The son of actor Morgan Freeman, Alfonso Freeman, is one of the most talkative prisoners. When the prisoners enter the building, Alfonso Freeman exclaims, Fresh fish! Today's catch is fresh! We're ensnaring them! Alfonso Freeman still performs professionally now. This was his first gig in show business. Apart from The Shawshank Redemption, he starred in films such as The Bucket List in 2007, The Retrieval in 2013, and Seven in 1995. The father of Alfonso acted in Seven and The Bucket List. Roger Clemens has nothing on Red. Red is playing catch with another prisoner when the two first meet in the yard and Andy begs for a rock hammer. Filming the sequence apparently took nine hours. It was a marathon. The ultimate professional, Freeman, tossed the ball without complaining for nine hours straight until the situation cleared out. The day after, Freeman arrived at set with his arm in a sling because his arm was hurting from the constant throwing. Getting into character. As Tim Robbins prepared to portray Andy Dufresne, he sought to understand the thoughts of a prisoner. He spent some time in solitary confinement to do this. Now that's a commitment to the trade. In the movie, Dufresne was sent in the hole for solitary confinement twice. First for using a phonograph to play Mozart, and again for jokingly telling the warden that he would never reveal to anybody that he had laundered money if he were freed. Claiming he was a simpleton didn't help either. A lousy grand? Rob Reiner offered Frank Darabont $2.5 million for the screenplay rights to Shawshank Redemption, as you may recall from earlier in the presentation. What was the price at which Stephen King sold the film rights to Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption? $1,000. A terrible big. King never did cash the check. A few years after the movie's release, King, ever the good sport, returned the money to Darabont. A kind letter that said, in case you ever need bail money, was attached to the check. Steve, I love you. The Origin of Red Red was a white Irish guy with red hair in the story. Prominent actors Clint Eastwood, Harrison Ford, Robert Redford, and Paul Newman were all entertained for the role. However, director Frank Darabont took a different approach, pairing Tim Robbins with Morgan Freeman in Red, an African-American. It's said that Darabont first considered Freeman for the part. The choice proved wise as Freeman's performance led to a nomination for Best Picture. The movie refers to the original character that only novella readers would get. Maybe it's because I'm Irish, Morgan Freeman says in response to Andy's question about Red's nickname. In the movie, Red goes by Ellis Boyd Redding. No deleted scenes. When DVDs were first released, one of the nicest things about them was the bonus features, especially the deleted sequences that moviegoers could never witness. The omitted sequences didn't make the final edit because director Frank Darabont only thought a little of them. He was so embarrassed and dismayed by them that he made sure they were all left off the Shawshank Redemption DVD. We want to see them and know we're not the only ones. And to be honest, we're ready to wager that they weren't that bad, especially in light of the extraordinary talent involved in the movie. Raising the Volume at the moment when Tim Robbins' character, Andy Dufresne, plays opera music on the record player for the whole jail to hear, Bob Gunton's character, Warren Norton, orders Andy to turn it off right away. Instead of following the warden's instructions, Dufresne turns up the volume while leaning closer to the player. 
But Robbins came up with the concept to turn up the music. Captain Hadley's Preparation Clancy Brown said several real prison officials asked to collaborate with him before taking on the job to make his depiction of Captain Hadley as genuine as possible. However, Brown rejected them, citing the abusive and corrupt background that set him apart from the great majority of correctional staff. Hadley made the proper choice, and under Warden Norton, he played a violent, spiteful commander to perfection. The Backstory of Red's Crime Red, Morgan Freeman, informs the parole board that he did a terrible crime and confesses to Andy that he murdered, but he never reveals the specifics of the murder circumstances. The novella by Stephen King discloses that Red modified the brakes on his spouse's vehicle to cause her to pass away and enable him to get her life insurance. His scheme succeeded in killing his wife, but in the process it also murdered another mother and her little kid. Tommy Williams could have been played by Brad Pitt. Pitt was considered while creating the role of Andy Dufresne, who mentors a young, brazen newbie to Shawshank. Pitt chose to take the main part in Interview with a Vampire rather than accepting the minor role of Tommy Williams. Gil Bellows, shown here, who played Williams, was ultimately cast in the part and gave a fantastic performance in the little time he spent on screen. Morgan Freeman's Favorite Film Morgan Freeman has had an extraordinarily illustrious career. From 1964 to 2018, he starred in 120 movies and television shows. It seems like 120,000. He was awarded the Best Supporting Actor Academy Award for his performance in Million Dollar Baby in 2004, for his roles in The Shawshank Redemption in 1994, Driving Miss Daisy in 89, Street Smart in 87, and Invictus in 2009. He was also nominated by the Academy. His all-time favorite movie? Nobody else but Shawshank. That's saying something, given Freeman's work and extraordinary accomplishments. A Box Office Failure The Shawshank Redemption was surprisingly deemed a box office flop. The movie made $18 million at first, but more was needed to pay for its development. Even with Oscar nominations, it raised an additional $10 million in revenue, but more was needed to compensate for it. Morgan Freeman said the movie's difficult moniker could have contributed to its demise. A bit of confusion about Rita Hayworth. Fearing that the title would confuse people, Frank Darabont decided not to use Rita Hayworth in the Shawshank Redemption. He was correct. Rumors began circulating in Hollywood that the film would be a biopic of Rita Hayworth. And as a result, Darabont began getting requests for auditions from various actresses and models interested in playing the part. Still more confusion. Agents of actresses and supermodels continued to seek Darabont for auditions even after he removed the word Rita Hayworth from the movie's title. During their phone conversation, one agent in particular told Darabont that his supermodel client would make a great Hayworth and that the screenplay was the greatest she'd ever read. Frank Darabont's Hands the hands shown in the opening sequence when Andy is seen loading a handgun are those of Frank Darabont, not Tim Robbins. The same happens again when Andy chisels his name into the jail wall. This is due to Darabont's belief that he was the only one who could achieve his desired outcome in the shot. Brooks' Crime Although it's never mentioned in the movie specifically, Brooks is imprisoned for reportedly killing his wife and kids during a poor run of poker. The Most Rented Video Despite the movie's lackluster box office performance, Warner Brothers nonetheless distributed over 300,000 copies of the rental to U.S. retailers. A representative referred to the figure as out of whack, considering the movie's earnings. Despite everything, it was the most rented film of 1995 and among the highest grossing rental films ever. Morgan Freeman's First Time Narrating it may surprise you that Morgan Freeman had never narrated anything before the Shawshank Redemption. In a studio in Iowa, the recording of the guide track was first finished in 40 minutes. Nevertheless, audio experts had to re-record the whole thing, which took three weeks since they could not eliminate background noise from the original tape. It's interesting to note that the narration was finished before any shooting started so that the rhythm of each scene could be established. 
Humane Society's involvement. The American Humane Society worked on the movie and carefully monitored the sequences in which Brooks Crow was featured. The organization located a maggot that had died from natural causes. The scene was permitted to continue because they felt that the scenario in which the crow is given a live maggot was harsh to the creature. The Film's Extras Many Mansfield, Ohio residents expressed interest in appearing in the film as extras throughout the shooting process. Unfortunately, many were unable to participate owing to work obligations or were able to commit to the required number of shooting days since the shoot took place during the day. Consequently, producers went to a halfway home to locate extras, many ex-cons. Shawshank Prison and Other Stephen King Works the Shawshank Prison is addressed in several Stephen King works, including Dolores Claiborne in 1995, a short story in which the protagonist informs her husband that he'll serve time in Shawshank Jail. The Shawshank Prison is not limited to the Shawshank Redemption. On a tight schedule Due to the very tight shooting schedule, the production staff threatened all late arrivals on the set with fines. William Sadler and Tim Robbins once arrived late, but they were never penalized. Interestingly, the movie's actual filming finished ahead of schedule. If you've watched the video till here, that means you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell icon 